Hey guys, so I am finally going to make the video for Mastering Engineering, Assignment A, Question 1. Haven't been able to get around to it because I went home for the weekend, so I couldn't actually record, but I can do it now, and so I'm going to. So Question 1 is the question with the pulleys and the elevator. These kind of questions, I think it's necessary to go over with a little bit more detail because people often mess up with setting up their lines or whatnot and they end up getting wrong answers or equating wrong things. So, let's see what this question starts with. You have a retarded, in my opinion, system of pulleys, which looks like this. We end up having a pulley up here, which I'm just going to make a dot, and a pulley over here, or a motor, sorry and the motor is connected to ropes which are connected together in a pulley system that looks like this they go down and up and back down sorry my my actual pulleys themselves are going to look horribly off scale so something like that then there's another pulley over here which supports the actual elevator itself and then up around another one and then back up to here. So this is what our thing looks like. This is what a diagram looks like and we have our whoops, that was horrible. Um our elevator over here. Now please just understand that this is supposed to be flat and all on the same level I'm kinda of stuck at drawing. Okay, and these are being pulled up by some V. I am going, I understand so far that the velocities are supposed to be equal, but I'm going to label them as different velocities. Because, of, because if we say they're the same and we start setting up our lines or whatnot as if they're the same, then we're going to have problems because we're going to end up equating those two as giving equal contribution to the elevator when the how they're connected to the elevator is completely different. So you, you can't just say that they're equal right from the beginning unless you set up your things right and it could get like it's easy to make mistakes that way so I'm going to keep them different for now and I'm going to simplify the expression in the ending. So first thing we need to do is I always do my axes in pink is we need to draw our datum line. I'm not sure if that's the right thing to call it, but that's kind of just the zero or the starting point. So I'm going to be smart and I'm going to draw it through the middle of the top pulley, or the top circular thing, whatever that thing is supposed to be called. Like that. And then one thing that needs to be understood about this question is that the total length of the rope is not always constant. So all the, you can't just take the entire rope and start setting up your equations with it because it's not constant because the rope is constantly being pulled into the motor. I guess I should I should draw the motor like this. And the rope is constantly being pulled into the motor, so the actual length of the rope is not constant. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to try to think of points like or think of sections of rope that are that do stay constant. And you can, and the realization or the assumption that you need to make is that if you cut this, these lines, these two lines on the far left and the far right at any point, the rope below it and everything that's not above it is going to be constant until that point passes into the motor. So, like, you can take this point right here, and I, I'm just going to make the actual points where I actually do cut them. If they're, I'm going to make V and V and B, V, V A and V B arbitrary points which are different and I'm going to explain that why too. So I'm going to slice VA here. I'm going to slice VB up here. Like that. So I'm only going to, so all the rest of the lines, so I'm going to squiggle out the lines in red. So these lines here, we're going to completely ignore. We're just going to say they don't matter. It, I mean we don't care about them because they're changing, so I mean, we only care about what's constant, right? And the point is, we like, and we only need to take any section of the rope because 
All we care about is the rate of the change of the rope to get velocities. We don't actually care about the length of the rope itself. We never actually solve for it. So let's just set up our little position lines, which are going to be in green. So we're, obviously we're going to have the two obvious ones, which are SA, there to there. And then we're going to have SB. And then we're going to have SE, which goes from here to here, or SC, sorry, which goes from there to there. And then most people usually just stop here because all the problems in the textbook that they go through all only have three. But this is also a very good thing to keep in mind when it comes to these pulley questions is whatever is changing, whatever is rate of change that you want to find, you need to have a position line going down to that point. Because if you don't, then you, I mean, you, what are you going to take the derivative of to get the speed? You know, like this is only going to give us the rate of change of the lines and this pulley here. It's never going to give us the rate of change of the elevator. And if you see how this is set up right now, we actually wouldn't even be able to find, you know, the total lengths of the ropes because we don't have anything that goes all the way down to the bottom. And so we'd be missing these sections. So. I mean, you can't just stop here. You need a fourth position line. And the fourth position line is obviously has to go down to, <coughs> sorry, voice crack there, has to go down to whatever we're trying to solve for. So obviously the position line here is going to go down to the elevator, but it's not going to go all the way down to the elevator because, again, you realize that anything below this line is going to stay constant. So basically, all, all, all the parts of the line that are through red, we don't care about. So that includes this part here, these parts here. We don't care about those parts because they just they stay constant. So they really don't add anything. They're just going to go away once you do the math anyways. So now, so our fourth line is going to drop down from here. And it's going to go down to there. And I'll call it S of E because that's the distance of the elevator, and that goes down to the middle of that pulley there. Okay, so now all we got to do is set up our equations. So let's do this in blue. So I'm, I'm going to call this length here that's associated to A, length A. So we're just going to start setting up our equations here. So let's see what length A is. So remember, remember, we don't care about this red part here. It doesn't add anything. So length A, we only care about everything below that red line and all the way up to this pulley here. So obviously this here is going to be SE minus SA. So minus SA. The length of this rope here is just SE. And the length of this rope down here is SC. So that's the length of the first rope. Now the length of the B rope, as I'm going to call it, is, remember, we only care about what's below here. So we only care about that length, which is SE minus SB. So, we, so we've dealt with this now. Now we got these two, which are equal in length. right? As you can see in the diagram, they're equal in length, and they're SE minus SC. So plus 2 SE minus SC. Sorry, I'm kind of going a bit off the screen there. I got that habit or problem. So there are our two equations set up. Now let's just do a little bit of algebra and, you know, simplify this. So if you take this and we simplify LA, so let's see, we got SE plus another SE, that's 2 SE. We got minus 1 SA and plus 1 SC. There we go. LB. Sorry about that, that was my phone going off. LB equals SE plus 2 SE. And we got minus SV minus 2 SC. If you have trouble following these, 
like you don't believe that I did my algebra right, then you know feel free to do it yourself or like show more steps. But you know this is kind of just how I do it. So you can always confirm these by doing the algebra yourself. So now if you just remember and look, we know we know the rate of change of a. We know the rate of change of b. We want to find the rate of change of e. So the thing that we're going to get rid of in these equations is C, and that's usually the way it ends up working out. Whatever that, that random pulley in the middle is that's connecting those two is usually the distance that you get rid of, that you don't really care for. So I'm just going to go ahead and isolate SC in these two. So let's see what we get. LA minus 2SE. So we get LA minus 2SE plus SA. And the second one, we get SC. Equals just that there's a two in, there's a two in front of the SC so there's going to be a half and it's going to be this side it's going to be all the same and we're going to take the opposite of the LB so we're going to go minus LB right there we go so now we're going to keep doing our algebra we are going to set those equal to each other and put the lengths on one side. So I'm going to take this, the top equation, I'm going to multiply it through by 2. And I'm going to set those, I'm going to set the resulting things equal to each other. So we have 3SE, kind of going off the screen again, minus SB minus LB equals 2LA minus 4SE plus 2SA. There we go. Now let's just kind of bring everything over to the same side and let's bring the constants, which is L, over to the right side. So we got 3SE plus 4SE. 7SE. And then we got minus SB, which doesn't have anything on the left side to go with it. Minus SB. And we're going to end up getting, bringing, we're going to end up bringing over 2SA minus 2 SA. On the right side, we're going to end up having 2 LA plus LB. There we go. So let's see what's dealt with. These are dealt with, SB is dealt with, SA is dealt with, the L's are dealt with. There we go. If you're ever unsure about your algebra, there's always a quick way to check to scratch out what you've dealt with. Okay, and then my also famous derivative. Let's take this, the derivative of this in terms of time. And I'm going to write that in green because we've used very little green. So this is going to be 7VE minus VB minus 2VA equals 0. So now if we just bring over the VAs to the other side because VE is what we're solving for. 2VA plus VB equals 7VE. If you'll just excuse me for a sec. And then just divide by 7. We get VE equals 2VA plus VB over 7. Now this is why you do not you, this is why you do not want to immediately presume that VA equals VB. And you also don't, and this is also the reason why you don't want to make in our diagram, you don't want to make SA equal SB. Because if you do that, you're going to presume that, that they're the same. And really, if you look at the our final answer here, down here, there it is. The, the, the motor on the left side contributes two times as much as a rotor on the right side. Motor, I don't know why I said rotor. Motor on the left side contributes two, two times as much as the motor on the right side. So you can't do that. So our final answer ends up being, when you presume that VA and VB are equal, 3V over 7. 7 that. And there we go. We are done. Let me, there we go. When you presume the two Vs are equal, you get that. And that is the final answer to this question. There you go.